Thank you, Judge. I have spoken to Ms. Barroso and to Ms. Wapachan about this matter. Uh, we are close to a resolution. The people have made a reasonable offer. Uh, Go ahead. Have made a reasonable offer. Uh, the issue uh, is there's an MDLP that's going to be requiring something to be paid off that may have already been paid off. So I need to get a receipt from Ms. Wapachan before we're prepared to resolve it. We're done. Before we're prepared to resolve it. So I'm asking for a short, either two, one, two, or three week adjournment, whatever fits the court schedule best to get that receipt and turn it over to Mr. Rosso to see if that will help to resolve the matter. Um, okay, that's fine. Hey, but is there a reason why she hasn't been going to community corrections? I was sick. I was in the hospital. She missed. Uh, she had a court date scheduled for February fourteenth. That was also. No, I understand that, but she had missed to January tenth. She tested negative. January nineteenth, she missed. January twenty second, she missed. January twenty fourth, she comes in test positive for THC, and then she misses. February 7th, and then Mrs. February 9th, and according to this, was in the hospital on the 13th through the 15th. Okay. So I, I understand what the court said. She missed the, uh, several tests. It sounds like in late January into February. Uh, she and, and the only test that she then took for that period was positive. So I know she was in the hospital, which is why the February 14th court date was adjourned. Uh, right, I have that one, right. but I, she I hasn't been testing. Okay. Uh, she did indicate that she went to go test today. But they did not drop her. They told her to wait till after court. Yeah, because she hasn't been testing. Fair. And I just found I have pneumonia and I was sick, like I just had a mint. Whatever. Did you read this violation report? I did not judge. Because I don't know what's going on with this individual, but the very first conversation, there's a call made to the phone and it looks like some games are being played with community corrections okay. and she tests positive for marijuana but then indicates she doesn't have a mmc she doesn't have a mar medical marijuana card um and that she was at a party and had two marijuana lace cookies um so on and they keep telephoning her said she was unable to take the test on 119 doing having to pick up her kids then she reminded that they were open from 8 a.m to 4 30 p.m instructed to report to community correction um on january 24th um she did and that's when she tested positive um she hasn't given any on the February 15th, although the court has them, she didn't give any medical documentation to the two community corrections. You didn't give it to the court. You must give it to Ms. Gaines. Oh. Yes, my understanding is she was working with Ms. Gaines. I guess that must be how the court ultimately received. The Pardon? You said that the court had not received the hospitalization. I have it. I have the hospital. That's that's fine with me. It's the stuff before this that is very concerning because she she does her first test. She's negative. Then she just doesn't seem to do testing, as though she's not taking what the court says very serious. I'll continue to go test. And then she's talking about 
then there's this whole issue with the phone back at the beginning of January about the appointment. I was, I did not. And then she's talking about having to pick up her kids and that's fine, except they, they reminded her that she's, that they're open from eight to four. Did I go to testing after that for, like she told me I could go the next day. And I believe I went that day. What day? The day after that I was supposed to pick my kids up. On the 24th, right. That's the only test you've done. Do you have it in front of you? You want to see my copy? I, judge, yeah. I don't have it in my. I don't, but. Thank you. No, I have not. I. That, like. So. That's on one. On 110. Which is reported to community corrections required to intake. Da -da -da. Yes, with the marijuana lace cookies, it, it appears, Your Honor. Yeah, approach. Yeah. So she had the marijuana cookies on uh, on which day? It looks like in the report she said on one ten. That was after she was arrested. I, I guess so, Judge. But she just told me it was before she was arrested. So which one is it? Before. She doesn't. She doesn't call, Judge. Uh, Why? She doesn't know the day. Obviously, Judge. I don't know when she was arrested. She, she believes it was right. So tell me about the phone. You see, I have a feeling you're playing games with me. I don't know anything about no phone. I don't remember. I don't know nothing about no phone. He's a, the judge says that the report is we're not returning, we're not making phone calls, they're not the right phone number for you to reach you to do the testing. Well, no, it, it, that beginning part of the report. Yes, sir. Where they tried to call and they said they were trying to return it to the owner and they said it was actually her on the phone. You understand what Judge Oh, said? yeah, when I lost my phone. And That's what he's asking yeah. you about. Yeah. <clears throat> I had so, lost my phone and I was getting it back from the person. That's what he's asking and you about. They he's... said that the person said somebody called me or something like that. And so Judge is asking you about the, the phone. When did you lose your phone? How did you get your phone back? He wants an explanation for when. I don't know. Work. Remember, I don't remember the exact dates, but I, whatever it is, I accept full responsibility. No, whatever. No. Oh, I don't know. You want to do that because that just had to make my job a lot easier. When I lost it. Well, how'd you get it back? That's what he wants to know. He I called to... my phone and I met up with the girl to give my phone back. Okay, where? At the gas station. Okay, how'd she get it? I left it there. At the gas station. Mm -hmm. What gas? He wants them details. The Sitco gas station right here outside of Hog, or right here outside of Hogback, whatever it's called right here. Okay. So my understanding from what she's telling me, Judge, is that she left her phone at the gas station, the Sitco. This was before the delayed marijuana cookies. That's my understanding. Oh, okay. Correct. This is after cookies. I ate the cookies before I was arrested a couple of days before that. The, I got arrested on the 31st. Ma'am. You have laced cookies. Take a test. It shows up negative. Then 14 days later, we probably would have known before then, but 14 days later, then you take a test and that's when it shows up in your system. The judge is saying that it should have showed up immediately. That's what he suggests. Okay. So he wants to know how is that possible? I don't know. Was there another slip? Mm -hmm. What he wants to know? No. Were you around someone who could have been? Okay, look. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Mr. Feaster, I realize you may be at a slight disadvantage because you don't have the report in front of you. Just, uh, I'm going to give you my copy of the report. Um. She can sit right in that last seat over there in the dairy box. And I will call it back up when she has her story straight. Thank you, Judge. But if she's up here and she's lying to me, ma'am, I don't play that way. Right. 
So if you come up here lying to me and don't tell me the whole truth, because I can see exactly what's going on here. I'm not stupid. But if you come up here lying to me, you're going to go. It's really simple. Have a seat right there. Have a seat right that last seat up there. May I brought that again, Jim? Thank you, Jeff, for giving us the opportunity to uh, pass this matter so I could get a copy of the report and review it. Uh, I did talk to Ms. Barroso about this uh, report. Our office did not receive a copy of it, so I did not have it. We didn't have it, so I apologize for that, Judge. No, it's okay. Uh, and going through the report with Ms. Wapachan, uh, I do have some corrections, clarifications to uh, the information I was providing previously, to Judge. Uh, she did. Oh, so now she's going to tell the truth. Yes, Judge. Yes, Judge. Go ahead. Thank you, Judge. Um, she doesn't did lose her phone at the Sunoco gas station at about at three eight nine one plat. About one seven. Judge. The, is the Sunoco? The, the Sunoco. Not the Sidco. Sunoco, right? Whatever one's right outside of here. Sunoco, I believe, is what she believes it was, Judge. She says that that phone was recovered prior to her first meeting with community corrections when she got her phone back on 1-9 of 2024. Uh, she went to Sunoco. She paid $100 to a Black female who had her iPhone 10. Uh, that phone did subsequently break. She took it and had it repaired or replaced at the iPhone store at Briarwood. She said she, when she did report on the tents per the report judge, she indicated to community corrections that she did have a marijuana cookie, two marijuana cookies. And so she indicated that she didn't know she was going to be positive. And that's when she said, what do I do when my test comes back positive? Uh, however, that apparently did not metabolize in her system at the, the point of that test. But she thought that first test would have been positive, Judge. Oh, okay, so she the cookies now appeared on the tenth. Yes, it happened before the day before her reporting, Judge. So I guess that would have been the ninth reported on the tenth. Go ahead. Okay, she indicated since that time uh, she has in fact uh, been using marijuana, and that is why she has failed to make her testing dates, Judge. She indicates that uh, she knew she was going to be positive on the tenth from the cookie, and she knew that subsequently she'd be positive from actual smoking of marijuana. Uh, so she missed those tests until she actually went in on 124 and tested and did have that positive result. Uh, she indicated that her last time smoking would have been two days ago on Tuesday the 27th, Judge. Uh, she indicates that she does not have an addiction and that she can't stop uh, smoking, but that she had not stopped at this point. And that she takes responsibility. She apologizes. She sees how serious this is. And she wants Hold to on a moment. I, I need to go back to the ninth. Okay. He had the cookie win. It would have been the day, is it the 8th or the 9th? The party would have been, uh, she, she believes it was the Friday, January the 9th, I believe that date was, she indicated, at her friend's party. Obviously. When did she get out of jail? She got out on or about 12.30. Because community correction received this order for her testing. On December 30th. On December 3rd? Yes, Judge. Okay. December 30th. It says new order received on 12 30, 2023. Right. So that's when she would have been released, I assume, Judge. And she doesn't report until the 9th or she the 10th. 10th. Correct, Judge. Why is she late reporting? Well, she didn't call initially, Judge. Why? She, she, she didn't, apparently didn't want to, Judge. Then she lost her phone on or about January 7th. Just trying to be honest with you, Judge, that's what, for what happened. Okay. On the 7th, she lost her phone. She recovered it on the 9th. She had that cookie. And then she reported on the 10th, Judge. Since that time, like I indicated, she has been smoking marijuana due to the stress of the situation. She's not denying that. And that's why she has failed to make subsequent reports 
thought from that that genuine. So she just decided that she just was going to do it her way. She did, Judge. She did. And she's not denying that, Judge. Not now. But obviously, I've impressed upon her. So why did she go over the data test? My understanding, she spoke to Ms. Gaines, and Ms. Gaines told her she had some prior failures to report, and that she knew she had to go report. So she went today, so she uh, tried to actually comply, and she I told her now how serious this is. I don't know if that was impressed upon her. So she just started taking marijuana without a card in violation of the order on the 8th, 9th of January. That's the cookie, right. Subsequent to that, she started smoking. So before that, what? Before that, she indicated she didn't use often. Not never, but not often. But now she's been using pretty much three days a week. That time. And she knows she's not supposed to be. She does, Judge. You understand? Something that she, she's not denying now. Uh, she was scared. And now that she, she has two small children, uh, she has a full-time job. Uh, she didn't want to lose her job, didn't want to have difficulty with her children. Understands now, she just can't do it. She doesn't have a medical marijuana card. She has no excuse. And she knows that uh, uh, your honor's not playing about marijuana, not playing about following court orders. And she indicates that she has given the well, It's a court, you know, and, and I'll tell you, it's the court gave her an order. Yes, Judge. And she decides that she just wants to not follow the court's order. Yes, Judge. And she gets here, gets called on it when she was up here initially, and then it's just through you just lying to me. Yes, Judge. I apologize, Your Honor. You don't lie to the court, ma'am. You just don't. I'll deal with the truth. We can work that out. But if you're going to sit here and lie to me, then that's going to be a problem and you're going to pay a consequence for that. That's what I told her in the box, Judge. When I sat down with her, I told her that she has to be straight with you. If you tell the truth, you generally work with people. Okay, that she apologized and she's sorry that you know, she wanted me to tell you what was going on, how she got to this point. She said she's had difficulty dealing with the stress of the situation. Uh, she's looking forward to getting this resolved. The prosecutor did, did make her a very reasonable offer. We're just trying to get proof of that payment for the destruction of the uh, broken window. To try to get these pled out. But obviously, she needs some help. Uh, she's not afraid to go to treatment if the court thinks she needs treatment. But she believes she can quit. And in 30 days from Tuesday's date, this should be all out of her system <laughs> completely. Because Tuesday was the last time she would have used her honor. But she did the 27th. She was just kept doing it. Yes, Judge. That's the problem. And the problem is, had she left here today, she would just continue doing it and continue violating this court's order. Yes, Judge. And quite frankly, her promise doesn't mean anything to me. Understood. It just doesn't. Had she taken the test, say, this is why I'm doing it, failed the test, that's one thing. But she just decides that she doesn't have to take the test, takes the test, yes. then decides she doesn't have to want to take the test, just continues using. Yes, Judge. So violating the court order in two ways, first by her use, and then also by not going to testing. And then... All on top of that comes here and lies to me. Anything else you want to say? To her credit, she did eventually uh, she did eventually come forth and tell your honor the truth. Uh, she came clean with me about what's going on and how we got in this situation. Uh, she, she acknowledges that she might have a problem because managing her stress, she's been unable to not use marijuana. And so she acknowledges that and is willing and ready to seek treatment, Your Honor. 
If your screen is locked on your phone, how is somebody else using your phone? My screen? They can answer calls still. Can they call out? No, and they did. So I don't believe the phone thing either, even now, as you're saying. Adjourned to March 7th this week, 2024 at 9 a.m. Um, and lady, you're gonna have to figure out how you wanna do this. You're here on a DB charge or DB type charge. You got resisting and obstructing. You're not following the court's rules. Has their nine millimeter handgun been surrendered? Yes. Yes, Judge. As she indicates that the win window has been paid for, that that was broken in the incident. You gotta follow the rules. And the most important thing is you don't lie to me. Understood, Judge. Defendant's bond is revoked pending a hearing on March 7th. Defendant's remanded. Thank you, Judge.